So here we have it, the X3 Mark III. Now I'm sure if you're familiar with Fios devices, you'll notice that this is very similar looking to the X1 second generation. And with that, I think it's very appropriate to compare the two throughout this review. Well, there we are then. There's the X1 second generation next to the new X3 Mark III. And as we suspected, they are very, very similar devices, although this one is a little bit bigger. And of course, the rest of the design, this one does have a slightly more masculine look to it. Sharp edges, strong lines, whereas the X1 second generation is more feminine, more curvy. But for the most part, very, very similar devices. But of course, their similarities do not end over there. Under the hood, these two devices are much more similar than what they are different. In fact, I would go so far as to say is that much of the architecture used in this has been carried over into this. Now the biggest differences here are that this has a balanced output, whereas this does not. This has dual deck design, whereas this has a single deck design. But the dual deck in this is just a two count of the exact same, so it seems, deck in this device. As such, they sound very, very similar. Perhaps even so similar that there is no difference at all, and the differences that I'm hearing are purely imaginary. That's very, very likely. Although, if the differences are real, the difference that you're hearing is most likely due to the low pass filter and operational amplifier change in this device. But for the rest of it, these two sound so similar that if you could not compare them one next to the other, in single-ended output at least, for what it's worth, it would sound like the exact same device to you. You would not hear a difference. Now seeing as similar as these devices are to each other, you would expect that the user interface would be similar. And they are. In fact, it's only slight graphical changes that have occurred from one to the other. This type of UI has not only been used on FIO devices, but have been used on the KNN3, for example, and the Shanling M1 and M2S. Although on the Shanlings, they've had some slight graphical changes, which make it appear like a more modern, more refreshed UI. Whereas FIO have, it seems for the last four years at least, since the first generation of the X5, have stuck to the exact same system, the exact same look, with a few color changes and icon changes here and there, but really nothing too different from one another. As such, if you're accustomed to FIO's layout and the way they've done their UI, then you'll feel right at home with the new X3 Mark III. Now in terms of the display, you might notice that the display on this is a little bit brighter than on this, which is fantastic because the display was one of the weakest points on this device. Where this one seemed overly pixelated, this one seems a lot clearer, a lot more legible, and it, as mentioned, it is brighter. But it is also a colder looking device, a colder looking display. So it's got more of a, of a blue tinge to it. But interestingly enough, Fire have used the same resolution for both of these devices, which means that technically, that as this is a bigger display, not by a hell of a lot, but it is bigger, therefore it's got a lower DPI ratio, which means that technically this is a less clear, a less defined screen when looking at uh, text and those things. That's what it should be technically, but because this does seem like a better display overall, that does not come across. That technicality does not come across. Instead, this one looks like the technically better display. One area where I really, really need to give FIO props is the quality control on this device. Now, throughout FIO's history, their quality control has been very questionable. 
And by questionable, let me give you some context. On the majority of devices that I've either owned or reviewed, the majority of them have had one or another very blatant and obvious flaw. A type of flaw that you think to yourself, if someone had just paid a little bit of attention, just the slightest bit of attention in quality control, they would have picked up on this and they would have fixed it. So it's those type of flaws that you think, how on earth did this come through quality control? But whatever, it is what it is. And with this device, I have honestly looked and I have looked and I have looked again and again at the build of this device and I cannot find a flaw on it, which says a lot because if you know me, if you know for the, the type of things that I look for on a device, um, if you've seen my comments on Headify, you'll know that I'm very pedantic about these things. If I had to pick one flaw, maybe, and this is if I'm really, really nitpicking, is that if we look on the back of the device, I'm not entirely certain why Fire have got this split over here, because usually on a device, this type of split would occur if there's a difference in materials. So on a mobile phone, you might have a metal back, but because you have the, the Wi-Fi antenna and the GSM antenna and the Bluetooth antennas, those things don't work so well through metal. So manufacturers would opt for a plastic bit. But these two feel both like plastic. So I'm not sure exactly why there's a split for that, but I'm sure there's a perfectly reasonable explanation for that. Now where this flaw comes in is that it seems that both of them have the same paint, but because there seems to be a slight difference in angle, because it's a metallic finish, it seems like there's a slight difference in angle and therefore this top part seems like it has a different color. But really that is being pedantic as possible and that is not what I would consider a flaw that is not something that I would consider something that needs to be checked through the quality control. So good job for FIO or FIO on that. Now, as mentioned before, the UI on these two are very similar. In fact, almost identical. Few graphical changes here and there, but for the most part, same thing, same flavor. So if you're used to the one, you'll get along with the other perfectly fine. Now, one thing that Fire have changed or rather added in terms of how you interact with the device is this multifunctional button over here, which has four different modes of how it operates. You can use it to forward, uh, skip tracks. You can use it to change themes. You can use it to uh, skip between the different EQs or to turn off the EQ. But perhaps the most appropriate use for it is the ability to skip through folders and playlists. Because really, you can use it to skip through the tracks, but you already have, and as a play pause, but you already have this button as a play pause. You already have these two as a skip or fast forward and rewind buttons. So really it's a bit redundant assigning the same function to that button, but using it to skip through playlists or folders, now that's something a little interesting. That's something a little bit more useful than what we've seen on any of the other devices. Now, of course, because of their similarities in UI, there are two questions, especially online that I've seen on Headfire that people are constantly asking. And I honestly don't know, and I find this very interesting, I honestly don't know which question was asked more. The, the matter of how it sounds, the one versus the other, and the responsiveness of the UI. Now that should tell you something, because really we are talking about music players here. The number one priority usually would be sound quality. So which one sounds better? But because the responsiveness or lack of responsiveness of this device is such a sticking point for, for people who own this device or people who have reviewed this device, but more people who own it, it's very interesting that they want that to be the upgrade for this device. Now, is it? Is it an upgrade? Yes. How much? 1%, 2% maybe. It's really, it's so small. 
that I would not consider it to be an upgrade. It's not something that I would consider a valid point to take into account when deciding whether or not you should buy this device or this device or if you should upgrade from this device to this device. I mean, really, that is not, it's just not going to be a day-to-day -day factor for you. Not something that will be noticeable unless you have two devices, the two devices next to each other, and then in some tasks we are talking about two seconds difference, maybe. Or, you know, the only, the only area where you would find a major difference and this is a test that I did between these two devices and the Shenling M2S, which I will get in a little bit to compare this to that because that is also a $200 device. The only area where I found a major difference between these two in terms of speed is the library update. This thing is horrendously, embarrassingly slow. A 200 gig card filled with almost 6,600 tracks, mostly flex, a couple of hundred mp3s, a dozen or so DSTs. This thing takes just over 40 minutes to update the library. That is pathetic. Absolutely pathetic. This one is considerably faster. This completed it in about 11 minutes which is a fantastic improvement. But hold your horses because mm, it's still quite a bit slower than the Shandling M2S, which did the exact same task in three minutes and 21 seconds. So really, I mean, yes, in that scenario, this is a major upgrade over that, but for the rest of it, it's, it's really, it's, it's not going to make a day-to-day -day difference to you. The other area where there's just an unnecessary lag and it hasn't changed from one device to the other is if you fast forward or rewind within a track. With either device, you press the button and it fast forwards or rewinds, whichever direction you're going, and you let go of the device, there's about a one and a quarter second delay between letting go of the device and before it starts playing from that position. So again, no difference between those two. Whereas the Shandling M2S, humanly, I cannot pick up on a delay at all. The moment I let go of that button, it continues to play from that position. And that is something that, that's what I expect. 2017, $200 device, that is what I expect for a device to, or how it should perform. This does not, this performs as near as makes no difference, exactly the same as this device does in that regard. So the only area, really, realistically, on a daily usage where you would find this device to be faster than this is a library update. And even then, can you really consider that to be a daily usage thing? Because how often do you really update the library? So the X1 second generation introduced Bluetooth. And for the first time for the X3 series, this too now has Bluetooth, seeing as they have a very similar, if not identical platform, it's now got Bluetooth. Now, is this an improvement over this? Because the Bluetooth in this was really not very good. It was okay, not great, um, barely acceptable, to be perfectly honest. This is not a major improvement over this. As with the, the UI responsiveness and all that, this is not a major improvement over this. I mean, it's such a small improvement. It's okay, it's not great. It's still an exceptionally slow startup of the device, whether, whether you just turning on Bluetooth and waiting for it to connect to a device, or if you've left Bluetooth on, switched off the device, and you're turning it on and waiting for it to connect automatically to a device again, it's, it's horrifically slow. This takes almost 27 seconds, whereas the Shandling M2S takes about 17 seconds when the device is off to start up and automatically start Bluetooth, automatically connect to a previously paired device. 
I mean, that's, that's a pretty, it's, sure, it's not going to create so much more time in your day that you'll find another activity to do, but it is a pretty significant change. Where there's an even more significant change is when you connect this, when you turn on Bluetooth and connect it to a previously paired. And I'll show you that because there's really not much of a difference here, one or two seconds, but let me show you the difference between this and the Shandling M2S. Okay, so here we have the JBL Charge 2, a portable speaker. So let me just show you how long it takes for this device to connect to this device. Now once it connects to this, you'll hear like a two or three beep notification. So let's turn this on. And now we're gonna see a, a lot of fingerprints on this glossy face. So Bluetooth is off and we'll turn Bluetooth on. Now I previously did this test away from camera and I did it three times and took the average. It was about 12 or 13 seconds, if I remember correctly. So it takes, it takes longer than what it should, longer than what you would expect a $200 device to take, especially this day and age. And there we go, that's connected. So that's, that's quite a delay. It's, that's not fantastic Bluetooth performance at all. So now let's check out how the Shandling M2S fares with the same test. All right, so here we have the M2S and I've already gone into the Bluetooth menu. So now if we go and select it, and this is a lot quicker. My previous test showed about three seconds and it's, there we go, that's connected. That is how I expect the device to perform. And keep in mind that this costs the same as the X3 third generation. So that's a pretty significant speed increase going from the, the Mark III to this M2S. So there we could see that this device lags behind the competition quite severely, especially in the Bluetooth department. But getting back to the comparison between this and this, the baby brother, um, Bluetooth range on this is slightly better, perhaps about two feet, half a meter or so. Um, but it does seem more stable than the range on this. Well, not so much the range, but the connection at a given range. This does seem a little bit more stable. But again, like in the UI, it's, it's not so much of a difference that I could really consider it to be a significant upgrade. It's percentages, tiny fractions of percentages, really. So finally, let's get on to the sound. Now, as the UI, as the Bluetooth performance, and as briefly mentioned before, the sound difference between these two is not as big as you'd expect. In fact, they're so similar that they might not even exist at all. That may very well be due to the fact that despite having a dual DAC design, this has the same DAC chip as this, or so it seems at least. It's very likely that those differences do not exist, in which case, considering how similar they are, quite possibly identical, if you're thinking about upgrading from this to this, expecting a difference in sound, I'm sorry, but you're going to be deeply, deeply disappointed because it's not going to give you an increase in sound, in sound quality at least. Now, of course, this does bring to the party balanced out, whereas this, this does not have balanced out. I would love to give you a concrete answer as to whether or not balanced gives you an improvement over single-ended and whether that would be the tipping point to go for this device instead of remaining on this device or if you're looking for your first device to pick this over this. Um, I cannot do that because I cannot objectively, scientifically test it enough to give you a concrete answer. And by that, I mean that at any point when you want to test something in an objectively scientific manner, you need to control as many variables as possible and to only change one variable at a time because your whole purpose of doing the experiment is to 
test and, and see what the outcome is based on a variable being changed. In this case, the variable would obviously be balanced versus single-ended. But that would require you to have a set of headphones, ideally two sets of the same headphones, one with a single-ended cable, one with a balanced cable. Now at the moment, I've got three sets of headphones, the Fio F9, the Fio F5, and the new DK3001. All three of those come with balanced cables as well as single-ended cables, but they're not the exact same one. So that would be a variable that would change that you don't want to change. So the other problem is also that going from single-ended to balanced will change the volume. I don't think enough people do this, but it is imperative that when you compare the sound from one device to another, or whether it be from one output to another, you have to keep the volume exactly the same or as close as possible. Because think about it, if you cannot hear something clearly, what do you do? If you're talking to someone, you ask them to speak up. Or, you know, if you're on a device, you might turn it up a little bit louder. So if one is louder than the other, you, it would automatically sound to you like the one is the louder one, most likely, is the clearer one, is the more dynamic one, is the punchier one. So it is really, really important that you keep the volumes the same for both devices. So bearing that in mind, it's not possible for me to test one from the other for me to give you an objectively scientific and, and factual advice on whether balanced is really worth it. Because really that, and maybe perhaps if you really need it, the coax outputs on this device, honestly, that's the only, not even significant, but just change that this brings over this. And before I get to my final conclusion about this device, it would be more appropriate to compare this a bit more in depth to the Shanling M2S considering the fact that they cost the same. So, the $200 battle between this device and this device. Now, of course, we can see that this device is appreciably smaller than this device. It is much more compact, more of a mini dep, really. It's a lot closer in size to something like the Hades or Hades, or however you pronounce it, AP60, which is really a small device, which is, that AP60 is only thicker than the Fio M3, which is one of the smallest depths out there. Anyways, getting back to this comparison, feature-wise, this runs away completely from this device. So much so to the point that I'm not even sure if Fio is aware of the M2S, because I feel like if they if they're aware of their competition, they really would not have skimped out on this device as much as they have. Sure, it's got the balanced output. Sure, it's got the coax output. But it does not have USB output, which this does. It's got horrendously slow Bluetooth operation. This is fantastically fast, pretty much on par with what a modern smartphone would give you. Then, of course, there is the sound. I, for one, usually favor function over form. It's for that exact reason that I chose to buy the IDSD Black Label instead of the Chord Mojo. To me, the Black Label just had the edge in sound quality, in ultimate sound fidelity. Now, many people would disagree with me. and. Rightfully so, you get to have your own opinion. They're both fantastically good devices. But there is always a little bit of a subjectiveness attached to it. And for me, it was just, they cost the same. And despite the black label being the bigger, less portable device compared to the Mojo, and the Mojo is only 
a little bit bigger than the M2S, so you know, really it's a small device considering what it can do. I chose the black label. I chose function over form. Having said that, I would give ever so slightly the sound edge to the X3 Mark III. Tonality wise, this sounds brighter than this, but not bright. Tonality wise, this is very much like the IDST Black Label, which says a lot. That is my reference device. That is a device I use to compare to everything else, right? That is my reference. That is my golden boy. For me, that is, in terms of a portable device at least, I think I would consider that my end game. It's, it's just, it's that good. And in terms of tonality, this is right there with it. Of course, it does not have the same punch. It does not have the same you know, dynamic goodness. It does not have the same resolution. It does not have the same clarity. But tonality wise, it's very, very close, which is something I appreciate. However, even though this is a more neutral and balanced sound compared to this, I don't think there's a big enough difference for that to be the tipping point to make the case that this is the device that should be bought, that this is the better buy for that $200. Given the functionality, the performance, the far less frustrating experience that I get with this compared to this, I would much rather go for this device because of that small, tiny change or that small, little, lacking ultimate sound quality that I would get from this compared to this is really not enough to say I would forego the performance of this, I would forego the features of this and take this. And speaking of features, this device has Hibby Link. Now, Hibby is responsible for many of the firmwares of these DAPs, perhaps even responsible for this. I'm not entirely sure on that because they look very similar, so you know it makes sense that they might come from the same source. But Hibby Link allows you to connect this device to your smartphone and use your smartphone as a remote to change between these things, which is fantastic because you can plug this into a stereo system, instead of having to connect it via Bluetooth, you can connect this via a single-ended auxiliary, so via the line-out to a stereo system, and then use your phone via Bluetooth to just control the volume or to change tracks, which is a pretty damn cool feature. Also, you can connect this to your phone and use this as a Bluetooth deck, so you could stream Tidal, Spotify, if you're into those things and use this as a deck, a feature which this simply does not have. So really, this is just so feature rich and the sound is so close that this device all day, every day compared to this, there's just, there's no question about it. So in conclusion, for the X3 Mark III, I honestly don't know what fire was thinking it almost seems as though they've had some success in the past pretty damn good success with their devices but i think it has led them to become a little bit too arrogant for their own good and by that i mean the competition has caught up the competition has surpassed them and I don't know what their game plan is because it doesn't seem like they can catch up to the competition anymore. The competition are the ones innovating, whereas Fire are now just, you know, marginally adding stuff. It's it's really not it's not a level playing field as as far as I'm concerned. It's a good device. It is a very very good device. Sound is something that Fire never does terribly. 
very good sounding device. But it's it's those lacking in features that, you know, it's I I don't know what what the point is. And on that note of not knowing what the point is, well, why was this device needed? Now we know FIO has a cycle of I think it's about eighteen months for the devices. So after eighteen months, they'll they'll replace a model. And it honestly, genuinely feels like they made this device simply because it was time to, not because they really ha had new stuff to add, new improvements to give us. It's such a small increment over this that I feel that they've mislabeled this device. This should not have been called the X3 Mark III. This should have been called the X1 Mark III. It really is such a similar device that this this is not an upgrade. This This feels like a slight refresh of this device. And what makes me really, really sad is that the X3, the very first generation X3, that was Fio's first DAP. And you'd think they'd show a little bit more love for it. You'd think they'd have more emotion for it. It feels like they've really skimped on this device and they haven't done justice to you know, the depth that started it all for them. This certainly doesn't feel like what the X3 Mark III should have been. This really is just an upgrade or a marginal improvement over this. And so the gap between the X1 Mark II, or Generation II, or Second Generation, or whatever they call it, and the X5 Mark III is fairly big. This should be sitting squarely in the middle between them, but it doesn't. This sits perhaps 1% above this. So really, is that what FIO should have done? Is that the game plan? That they're just going to release devices for the sake of releasing it, for the sake of profits, for the sake of expanding the product portfolio? Because really, that's what it seems like. It doesn't seem like they've got any emotion into this device. It doesn't seem like there's any soul gone into this device. They really haven't done the X3 line any justice at all. And for that reason, that reason alone, not alone, but you know, considering the competition, considering where this device stands, next to this it's this is not a device that I can recommend to someone who's either looking to upgrade from the X1 the second generation or someone who's looking for the first step and is considering this device I would say hey you know what go for the Shandling same price much better features the sound is still very very good but it's it's overall it's it's a better device. It's smaller, so it's a more portable device too. It feels nicer. It's got the glass back, and it's just it feels sleek and sexy. But seriously, Fio, I I don't know what you've I don't know what you're attempting here. Because really, this seems like something that was just released because a bunch of pencil pushers said it's time. You need to. And I don't think they've done the, the X3 line justice. So I hope that's been helpful. I hope I didn't rant too much. If you found this video helpful, please like. If you need any answers to questions that you have, if there's something I haven't covered, please leave them in the comment section. And I'll catch you in the next one, YouTube. Cheers.